Today's lesson is laws of rational exponents, and we will not be using a calculator. My learning objective is I can rewrite expressions involving rational exponents without a calculator by applying the definition of rational exponents. As a warm up, I have four examples for you to look at to remind you what some of the rules are. Can you do the two problems below? You shut off the video, pause it a minute, and how did you do? Let's check. So I'm going to expand this. I don't have an index written, so I know it's a square root. So I can rewrite 8 as 2 times 2 times 2. And y to the fifth as y times y times y times y times y. For a square root, I know I need to take these out in pairs. So when I pull this out, I have 2y squared. And what I have left under my square root is 2y. How'd you do? For my second example, this is a cubed root with the same numbers. So I'm expanding the same way, 2 times 2 times 2, and y times y times y times y times y. But since I have the cubed root, I need to take these out in triples. So pulling these out, I have 2y, and I have the cubed root of y squared left. Okay, so let's get into the definition. So for rational exponents, when my power is 1, the denominator is the index, and we re refer to that as letter N. When I don't have a power of 1, I refer to the power as M. So the base is B. The index, or sometimes called the root, is N. And I can write these a couple different ways. Okay, so I'm going to go through some examples for the skills, and then the skills are actually intended for solving equations. So I have two equations at the end. Okay, so to get started, here's an example, 10 to the power 1 half. So I know the numerator is m the power. The denominator is n, the index or the root. So I take, and the 100 is the base. So I take the base and put that under the radical. I put the index or the root here and the power here. So I'm thinking of 100 as really 10 times 10. And since I have an index of 2, I'm taking these out in pairs. So this is 100. Now, I think most of you would have recognized that the square root of 100 is 10, but I just wanted to show the process with something familiar. Okay, number 2, I have, I'm raised to a fractional exponent, raised to another fraction. So when I'm power to power, I multiply my fractions. So that's numerator times numerator and denominator times denominator. So this is 16 to the 3 fourths power. So my base is 16. I put that under the radical. My index is 4. And I'm going to cube that. So I'm thinking of 16 as really 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Since I have a fourth root, I want to take these out in fours. So this equals 4, but I still need to cube it. I'm sorry, it's not 4, 2. But I still need to cube it, so 2 cubed is 8.
Right now I have a bunch of examples with negative signs because we have to really be careful where the negative signs are. Okay, and number three, my negative sign is in front of the base, so it has nothing to do with the fractional exponent. So this is really negative one times 27 to the two-thirds power. So this is negative one, so I write the base under the radical. My index is three, and I am raising it to the second power. So 27 is also three times three times three. So this is negative one times three squared. Three squared is nine times negative one is negative nine. My next example in four, I have a negative sign inside my parentheses. So yes, the two thirds does apply to it. So I rewrite this as my base is negative 27. My index is three and I'm squaring this. So to get a negative number, I'm multiplying negative three times negative three times negative three. So I can have a negative number under an odd index. So when I pull that out, that is negative three, but I'm still squaring that. So negative three quantity squared is positive nine. Okay, let's keep going with those negative signs. So when I have a negative sign in the exponent, that means my numerator and my denominator need to be flipped. So I have one over 27 to the two thirds power. So I'm gonna write one over 27 as my base. I'm gonna put that under my radical. My index is three and I'm squaring this. So again, I'm thinking of 27 as three times three times three, and I'm squaring three, so that is, oh, it's not three, it's one over three, is one ninth. Okay, so let's have a negative sign outside of the base and in the exponent. So the negative sign to the left of the base means I'm multiplying times negative one. The negative sign in the exponent means I need to flip my numerator and my denominator. So that is one over 27 to the two thirds. So this is negative one. So one over 27 is my base that goes under the radical. My index is three and I'm squaring this. So 27 is three times three times three. So I'm thinking of this as negative one times one third quantity squared one third squared is one ninth times negative one is negative one over nine. Whew. Okay, so just when you feel like you kind of have it, then we're gonna do it backwards. So now I'm gonna do a couple examples and I wanna write my answer in, fra my, in the fractional form. And I'm also interested in my answers as positive rational exponents. Okay, so number seven, just to remind me, two here is m my power, and six here is n my index or my root. So I'm gonna write everything as 
the power over the root. So the power is outside, so it applies to everything on the inside. So this is 8 to the 2 6 power times a. Now this is power to power, so it's negative 1 times 2, so that's negative 2 over 6. And we also have power to power one more time, so that's 2 times 2 is 4 over 6. Okay, next I want to simplify my fractions and then move the a base to the denominator because I'm negative. So this is going to be 8 to the 1 -third power. A is the 1 -third power. And B is to the 2 thirds power. Now I can still simplify a to the 1 -third power because I know that would be um, the cubed root of 8. And I know 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. So this would be 2. So my last simplification is going to be 2b to the 2 thirds power divided by a to the 1 -third power. So I just need to simplify, see what else I can do, simplify, see what else I can do until there's nothing left to do. All right, number eight. All right, I don't have an index here, so I know that's a square root. So I'm going to write these as x to the 1 half power times x to the 1 third power times x to the 1 sixth power. So when I'm multiplying base times base, I add my exponents. So to add my exponents, I need to have a common denominator. So my common denominator is 6. I need to multiply times 1. Okay, so x, so now I'm writing this. This will be x to the 3 over 6 power times x to the 2 over 6 power times x to the 1 over 6 power. So 3 6 plus 2 6 plus 1 6 is x of 6 6, which is just x to the first power. Okay, I have a term on the outside of some parentheses. So I need to distribute this to the two terms on the insides of the parentheses. So I'm going to multiply coefficient times coefficient. So 3 times 1 is 3. And my bases are the same at x. So when I multiply two bases that are the same, I add the exponents. So negative 1 third plus positive 1 third totals 0. So multiplying times my second term, 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. Again, I have the same bases, so I add my exponents. So negative 1 third plus 4 thirds is 3 thirds. Now I know anything raised to the 0 power is 1. So simplifying, this is 3 minus 12 to the first x, 12x to the first power. Okay, number 10. I am raised to an exponent that applies to everything inside the parentheses. So I start by writing this as 16 to the negative 1 half power. 
for the a base I am power to power so I multiply my fractions so this is negative 4 over 6 for my b base I am power to power so again I multiply my fractions so this is negative 1 fourth these are all negative exponents so they all belong in the denominator so this is going to be 16 to the 1 half. I'm going to simplify my fractions. a to the 2 thirds and b to the 1 fourth. Okay, now I still can simplify 16 to the 1 half power. So this would be like writing 16 and I'm taking the square root. Okay, most people would recognize the square root of 16 is 4. So my last simplica simplification is 4a to the 2 thirds and b to the 1 fourth. Okay, so now let's get to solving some equations using these properties. Okay, we're going to solve x to the 2 thirds power equals 64. So when my variable is to a fractional exponent, I want to raise it to the reciprocal of that exponent. So I'm going to raise this to the 2 thirds power. Whatever I do to one side of the equation, I have to do to the other side to keep my equation equal. And the purpose of this is I'm going to multiply. This is power to power. So now I'm going to multiply numerator times numerator and denominator times denominator. So I end up with a power of 1 for my variable. So this is 64 to the 2 thirds power. So now I have x equals, and I'm going to rewrite this where I put 64 under my radical. This is the cubed root. I want to square that. So I'm thinking about 64 as really 4 times 4 times 4. And I have a cubed root, so I'm taking that out in threes. So that is 4 squared, and 4 squared is 16. I have one more that's slightly different. So I have an expression raised to a fractional power, but I'm going to apply the same concept that I want to make the power 1. So I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of that power. And whatever I do on one side, I need to do to the other side. So on the left, I have x minus 1. And on the right, the base, I'm going to put 25 under the radical. This is the square root and I'm going to cube that. So on the left I have x minus 1. When I take the square root of 5 or the square root of 25, this is a positive or negative of 5 and I need to cube 5. So x minus 1 equals plus or minus 5 cubed is 125. So now I set up for two equations. x minus 1 equals 125. And x minus 1 equals negative 125. So I'm going to add 1 to both sides, and I get x equals 126, or x equals negative 124. So I want to make sure that you're clear whenever I'm taking the root of an even index, I need to make sure I'm taking the positive or negative. In my previous example, 
when I was taking the cubed root of 64, I only took the positive because in order for me to have a positive 64 as a radicand, I had to have three positive numbers. So I have to just make sure I'm taking the positive or negative for even indices. That's it.